Good morning. I'm Kate Bulkley. Welcome to this uh, MIP TV keynote. I'm here to introduce Tim Hinks. He is the president of Endemol Group and the chairman of Endemol UK. He is across both the creative and the commercial side of the Endemol Group globally. Uh, most recently, um, he was the CEO of Endemol UK. He's actually been with Endemol since 1999 uh, until taking on his new post uh, as president of Endemol Group and chairman in May of 2012. Endemol, as many of you know, has had its financial challenges at the corporate level, but at the company level, he tells me they are extremely profitable. They have operations in 31 territories. They produce roughly 20,000 hours of programming a year in all genres. Obviously, Endemol is known for Big Brother, but it's moved into scripted uh, entertainment in a big way. And it now, scripted, now accounts for a quarter of the company's business. So it's not just about Big Brother only, although Big Brother is still a big hit, as I think he will tell you. Tim is going to talk about his business. He's going to talk about what it's like to be an independent production company today, one of the biggest. And he's also going to tell us why today is the best time to be a creative. MIP TV is honored to have Tim here to speak to us. Would you please warmly welcome Tim Hinks. Hi, everyone. Extraordinary. As I walked on, my phone started ringing. It's in my pocket. But I'm suggesting I'm not going to answer it if everyone's happy. Um, I uh, Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I can see absolutely nothing, but I gather there are some people here. Um, and may I say, our clients, broadcasters around the world, are looking particularly lovely this morning. Um, I, the one thing I can see is a clock, which is telling me how, how long I've got. So I shall try and be quick and efficient and, um, and give you an insight, I hope, into what we're doing at Endemol and maybe some wider lessons for the, for the industry. About a year ago, I was asked by our CEO, Yus Spey, um, if I would like to be uh, president of the group. It's a, pretty, um, it's a pretty sort of North Korean affair at Endemol. Um, there's no voting. It's not that sort of president. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a job I took, though, with um, real excitement and pleasure. Um, and I'm delighted I did. Um, and actually, today um, gives me... There's a couple of things I can do today, I hope, for, uh, for, for you. One is, if you like, to reflect on what we as Endemol are doing. And I think, unashamedly, I'm here to celebrate what Endemol is doing. As Kate said, um, there's the financial uh, story at sort of corporate level, but there's, more importantly, the company itself. We have a new global hit going around the world, which we brought to MIP. Big Brother is resurgent. Uh, new formats uh, 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 from all sorts of all corners of the globe. So things are looking very, very good, and we're feeling confident and optimistic, despite you know a challenging market that everyone's facing. I think the second thing I can do, if I may is offer, and by the way, I'm English, so when I say, if I may, I'm not actually asking your permission, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Um, but it just makes me feel more polite. Uh, the doors are locked, there's nothing you can do about it, I'm doing it anyway. I'm going to offer you a sort of, let me, let me call it a sort of creative manifesto, if you like. Uh, five key points in 17 minutes and 48 seconds, um, which hopefully hint at, or perhaps give a sort of road map as a creative person or a creative company as to how we face and how as Endemol we're trying to face the increasingly um, uh, sophisticated and, and diverse markets that we're working in. Um, le let me say at the outset, I, and one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be where I am and, and to be working with such great people in the Endemol uh, group and around the world, is because is, is, is I genuinely believe this is an absolutely fantastic uh, time to be a creative I mean, it, I, in some ways, I think it's never been better. Uh, I, I think the opportunities are extraordinary for us all. Um, having said that, I think we do need, as I'll hopefully go on to explain, we need to think slightly differently about creativity and content. And in particular, we need to think about how we market that content and how we talk to the audiences out there in a more direct way and how we think about the risks we take, how we move away from the old model to some extent and move into more riskier territories, particularly in digital. So I think it needs a sort of cultural shift. Um, I'm now going to go through my uh, five-point 
uh, manifesto, which, as I say, to underline, you have no choice about. I'm going to do it, and here it goes. We're going to start with the first principle, if you like, which is, um, which in a sense is, is, is at, at the core, is looking after the brands that we have. I mean, it is in some senses the first job you do, and it's the last job you do. It's incredibly important to um, keep brands alive. And for me, the big target is how do we make sure our brands, or a, a, a significant number of them, break that notion of the sort of five-year cycle? Most formats fail, OK? We have to accept that. That's the business we're in. Uh, but when they work, how do you ensure they go beyond the normal sort of three to five-year um, uh, uh, life cycle? Now, I am going to talk briefly about Big Brother, because I think Big Brother is a perfect example of what we're, what we're doing here in this area. Um, Big Brother, as you may know, is now back in, 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 in Germany, for example. We announced uh, yesterday, I think, back in Portugal. Um, but more broadly, uh, has scored terrific results in Australia, Brazil, the UK, the US, uh, India. I mean, it is, it's resurgent. Why is that? Well, I think there's a couple of things. One is, it's a fantastic show, great idea. And, and I know you're all fans, and each and every one of you. Um, but I think more than that, we're doing a couple of things with it that I think we, we're going to try and do more and more, and I think it's important to focus on. One is how you use technology and social media with your brands. You, you, in a sense, you know, Big Brother the perfect example. You have to use and market it in a way that, that means that every new series is like the first series. So I think a couple of examples of what we've done, um, you know, in Australia, which I've just mentioned, you know, there were 18 million video downloads of, of, of Big Brother and the most extraordinary uh, Twitter storm and Twitter following, which the team there encouraged and provoked. Um, in Brazil, they have them brilliant. Come, go to the Endemol stand, and you will see Brazil have this, uh, with our partners Globo, have this 3D version of Big Brother. I mean, can you imagine anything better? If you, if, if you, I think I've understood the demographic here. If you're interested in seeing Brazilians uh, yeah, half naked in the sun in 3D, and I think I've just about got you right, I suggest you head to the Endemol stand, ideally not during my speech, but afterwards. Uh, it's an extraordinary technical and technological innovation, uh, and again, it's about refreshing and keeping that brand special. Um, but let's not also not forget old-fashioned ideas of casting. I mean, old-fashioned I use in a sort of loose sense, which is, you know, back to first principles, always keep keeping each show as if we're starting off for the first time. And it's about a creative dialogue with ourselves, with creatives talking, sharing, discussing. The endemol secret of, of, of what one of them is, that is, is, is this notion that as a network we get together, we discuss between creatives what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve. So step one, look after what you have, very important. Step two, diversification, everyone talks about it, but di diversification led uh, by creativity and, and by, uh, by, by reminding ourselves what it is we do well and, what it's, and, and, and the things that we don't do so well. It's slightly odd, I think, unusual for me to talk about M&A and say to you that we are now, uh, as Endemol, 2013, we're back in the M&A business. I say it's unusual because I'm not now going to go on to announce what we're doing, uh, because you will read and hear about that in the coming months. But I think it's important, a lot of people have asked me that question, and you and I were discussing this, and I think it's important for us to say that the cash uh, situation at Endemol is now so strong uh, and, and, and robust and the business is in good shape that we are now, as it were, back in the game of M&A and we want to talk to you that over the coming months. The right deals for the right amounts, uh, not for the sake of doing them, but you will hear more on that cu coming through um, it, as we approach M&A in a sensible uh, way uh, this year. And let me give you an example of where we have, if you like, put our money where our mouth is, a sign of the business going, the um, uh, uh, strength of the business. Scripted. We've seen, as Kate said very kindly, 66% growth in scripted uh, in the last uh, four years uh, at Endemol, and it represents about 25% of our revenue. W why have we done that? How has that happened? Very briefly, we've known and been very proud for some time of, uh, of our breadth of scripted across, um, uh, let's say, these sort of non-English uh, language countries from, from Latin America uh, to, to, to Spain to Netherlands, Italy, and so on. Uh, what we've done for the first time is really got behind our English language scripted to help boost that. And we've done that in two ways. The, the, the acquisition of Tiger Aspect in the UK has created some absolute premium content, Ripper Street on BBC, 
for example, or Peaky Blinders, which is coming to the BBC uh, uh, soon. Um, but um, also, we've put money with our distribution arm, through Kathy Payne and her team, into Endemol Studios, run by David Goldberg, Philip Maygray, and Jeremy Gold. I'm not going to name check everyone, don't worry. Um, who have created this um, incredibly impressive Endemol Studios, where we are putting our own money in. We're taking some risk to get behind content. So far, so good. Early days, but we're pleased with the progress. English language, scripted, traveling uh, between UK and US. And I want to give you just a flavor of that. There's a show called Low Winter Sun, which started life in the UK on Channel 4 a few years back and is now going to be featured on AMC in the summer, um, uh, uh, produced by Endemol Studios. It's a fantastic piece uh, for our friends at uh, AMC. And I might just uh, play a bit now of Low Winter Sun, just give you a flavor of what that series is about. So you took it. Get your mind right, Frank. Because this isn't a game. This here is grown up shit. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. You knew IA was after him. You knew he'd give you up because you're as dirty as he is. Back off! Look at me. Tell me what you see. Man's a disease, Frank. Folks talk about morality like it's black and white. Did you play me? Get him off! Hey! We're making it right. It's Brenda, isn't it? Eternal Affairs. Jack off dead dirty cup. This is a complete shit storm. It's been a long 24 hours. We're very um, excited by that, um, and you know we've got behind it, and we've put our money where our mouth is. And also, let me be clear: I am not the star of that show. Just in case you were thrown by that, that is the wonderful Mark Strong. Um, so, um, so, so there we are. So, areas of diversification um, that are incredibly important to us. I think the third uh, part of the manifesto is we go down to seven and 32 seconds. It's like a sort of high jeopardy game show um, uh, as, we, as, we, as we make our way, is that, is that contrary to what people say as, the, um, as internet and technology makes the world uh, smaller, in fact, the world is getting bigger. Uh, or certainly it's getting bigger when it comes to creativity, uh, television formats, and indeed ideas beyond television. And we launched 175 formats in 2012. About 61, 62 of those were new formats um, uh, that we'd created as a group. But what's particularly striking, and these are titles we're bringing to uh, MIP uh, this year, you know, whether it's the next one in Italy, a huge breakout hit in Italy, or Germany absolutely um, going for, for, for it at the moment with the brain and unbeatable two extremely um, successful uh, shows in Germany and so on, uh, as well as perhaps some of the more you know, obvious, it's no less easy, uh, no less uh, hard for them, but the, the, the America and, and, and Holland. But I think we're seeing this spread around the world, and what we, what we do is we, we're, we're obsessive about making sure local teams uh, can pursue their local objectives, um, can pursue the best in creativity, and then when something rises to the surface, we're extremely good at getting together, creative, talking to creative, to get shows to move uh, around. You cannot, uh, and this is, I speak for Endemol here, you cannot centralize Endemol creatively. It is, is absolutely impossible. It's like asking a, a, a Frenchman to say something positive about English food. It's just not worth trying. It doesn't work. And, and here's the fruits of that, allowing creatives to follow their own ob objectives and follow their own teams and what they believe in. And I want to give you a, a, a little bit of Latin cheer 
uh, uh, here today because while one of our most successful shows right now, the one we're extremely proud of, is a global hit in over 20 countries, including the, coming to the UK and the US this summer, uh, 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 is, 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 a, is a show you'll be, uh, I think, familiar with. Your, your face sounds familiar from Spain. Um, it's uh, got comedic style, it's high production values, um, it's extremely strong, fun, family entertainment. It's a breakout hit, and uh, please don't stand up in the aisles and start singing, uh, but do enjoy this um, little uh, clip of our wonderful Your Face Sounds Familiar, our current global blockbuster. Thank you, Your Face, please. <laughs> Yet another animal hit taking over the world. Your face sounds familiar. Legendary identities, just not their own. Performing live. I want to break free from your lies, your self that is fun and need you. Your Face Sounds Familiar is a high-end celebrity music competition with a great comedic twist. This year, launching in the US, France, Russia, and the UK. Your face sounds familiar. Don't miss out on all the fun. It's only 20 to 1 on the first day, and we've had our first airing of Gangnam Style. I suspect there's more to come over this MIP, so I know how much you love it. Um, so, um, formats and ideas from around the world. The final two points. Um, the first one, I think, is, as I said earlier, about how it, it's, it's essential now to have a different relationship with audiences, from, in a sense, from us as a company as, and as creative sort of leaning back to us leaning forward. Um, I think the fundamental principle here is that content and ideas are actually not enough anymore. Um, that they're, they're, they're necessary, but they're not sufficient. Um, that there is a need now to fuse creative and marketing, particularly in the digital space and certainly in online digital. So I'll say a couple of words about YouTube, because YouTube have made a huge impact at MIP over the last couple of um, years, and, 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 and I think there's a couple of things to say about it. Um, the first thing is Ben McCohen Wilson from YouTube, who some of you know, said to me the other day, this is, puts it in perspective. Every, uh, uh, every minute, 90 hours of new content is uploaded onto YouTube. Every minute, 90 hours. It is the Wild West. It's anarchy. So the idea of treating YouTube, as I think some people and, and, uh, and, uh, tended to do a year ago as, a sort of, as an alternative to a broadcaster, is, in my opinion, not right, or it's certainly not the whole story. What I think YouTube is about is not how many sort of channels you've got. OK, so we've got, Endemol has over 100 YouTube channels. Fantastic. Many of them, uh, uh, all of them we're extremely proud of, and many of them have significant numbers behind them. But that is not enough. What the real way forward now is to tie those uh, together as networks. Um, and it's, as, as I say here, it's not how much you've got, it's what you do with them. It's tying them together um, and, and, allow, and marketing to, to the consumers and users and YouTubers of each different channel so that they come under one umbrella. Because in the end, one of the things we're trying to do is get access to the advertising dollar. And to do that, you've got to have scale. So I think our strategy, people may disagree, may agree, um, is uh, is, for instance, you know, let me give you an example. We're going to announce, uh, in fact, I'm announcing now, that we're creating a Fear Factor YouTube channel. Um, it will start in the US. It will involve YouTubers from the US hosting it. It will involve archive. Um, and then it will involve real uploaded clips of people doing all sorts of wild and wonderful things. Um, and then we'll do the same around Europe. And the thing will be connected. 
um, it will become a network so that you can market things to each other, you can share clips, uh, and, and indeed share information. So it's about that notion of creating a, a network. And then if we add into the mix something like Mr. Bean, which is one of ours, which has about, I think, seven and three quarters of a million subscribers on YouTube, 35 million Facebook likes. Um, once you start adding these things and tying them together, that's when you, when you, when you, when you start to have, have fun. So I think, I'd, in summary, I'd say we're in, um, in a sense, we're in the channel business, if I can put it that way, but in the digital arena and online digital. And that's a very exciting place for us to be, uh, I believe. I think the final point I wanted to make, which is linked to that, is the notion that it's time to change the risk model. Let me be clear, you know, the vast majority of what we do is, is with, our, with, with broadcasters in what some would call the traditional model. That has been unbelievably resilient and still remains one of the most exciting places to be. We are absolutely delighted and excited to be part of that and to be working with the partners we work with. But I think going forward, we're all gonna need to do more. And I think in order to do that, we need to change the way we think about risk and the way we think about how we uh, expose ourselves and our money and our investments in new digital areas and how we behave in those areas, because it's a sort of different mindset. And you all, I know, want to know what the future, digital future looks like. Well, I've actually got it. I've got a photograph of it, so, which is going to save a lot of time. You can probably get the next flight home. Um, this is what the future looks like. Um, pretty clear. I mean, it's pretty much what you expected. There is Sir Keith. So Keith Richards, uh, you've just missed the unveiling of the future, but do come and sit down. It's lovely to see you. I guess you're coming to the next one, but I won't take it personally. Um, the, um, we decided um, we wanted to talk to the Rolling Stones, uh, Endemol. So as a group, uh, group activity with the UK and, 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 and um, the Netherlands, we got together, and we've created this app. Uh, with the Rolling Stones. We don't want to make concert videos, we don't want to make television programs with the Rolling Stones. We wanted to, a digital partnership with them. And to do that, it took investment. We've invested in it. We are um, partners with the Rolling Stones, and we've created this app, which has been very successful so far, and is a live, organic, breathing thing. Um, it did entail a meeting with Mick Jagger, which, yeah, you know. Um, it's not... It's not often you get to meet a living legend, so Mick was pretty excited um, <laughs> when, I, uh, when, I, when I rocked up. I was, yeah, you know, fine. Um, so he and the band uh, were determined that they wanted a digital, um, uh, 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 they wanted to better market themselves digitally. So in a sense, we've created an app with them that is effectively marketing and retail, if you like, using content. And it's one of the big lessons you learn here is about loyalty. It's not about scale. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of people subscribing to this app. That's, in a sense, not the point. What's interesting is that 91% of them all, for example, said yes to the push notifications. They wanted to be told about what was going on the Rolling Stones. It's about working in some of those niches in a retail space, but using your creativity. And may I just particularly note out and thank my PA, Kelly, for doing the little Rolling Stones logos on the PowerPoint. I think you'll all agree they're quite something. So that is a very exciting um, uh, but new venture for us, and we want to do more. We want to back our content in digital. We want to get behind it. We want to take risks where appropriate in the right way, um, in a way that's different from the model that's gone before. It may involve getting into online video. It may involve getting into gaming platforms. There's all sorts of uh, possibilities. And I think we have to move forward in that way. I know I'm overrunning, so I'm going to very quickly show you, bring you back down to to Earth. So there are my five thoughts for how we go forward. But I just want to share with you something that reminds us of why we do what we do and where we are. And I want to, and I want to take you just a slightly personal thing. Um, we've got a really interesting product and show which has a very important digital aspect to it. It has second screen apps. It has, we've put, again, we've invested in some of the games that are around it. It's called, as you'll know, the Money Drop. And the Money Drop was, has just, last week, I think, it was announced that it was the most, by an independent, I should say, organization, the most valuable format in Europe last year uh, of 2012. So this is an extraordinary breakout show that continues to do great business for us. But why is it there? Not because we wanted something with second screen, not because we wanted something with an app, not because we wanted a very valuable format. I mean, we do, but I mean, that's not how you get them. Um, it's always about creating the magic. And I do just want to bring you back to why we're so excited. Whatever the platform, it is in a way about creating magic and about creativity. And um, it was the third day in the UK of this show called The Million Pound Drop. No one else in the world had heard of it. Um, and it was doing fine, the first two episodes fine. And then suddenly, 
out of nowhere, something happened. Two players, ordinary members of the public, created some drama that the entirety of the UK on Twitter, on social media, just went crazy for. It was the end of the game. They had to guess um, who, um, had met, who had married first, Charles and Diana, or Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon. That was the question. They put their money on it. And one Wednesday night in sunny England, this is what happened. So if you play this, and this started the whole phenomenon. Thank you. Are you going to crash out at this question and go home empty-handed, or are we going to give you £525,000? Have you beaten the million-pound drop? Let's see. Please, a massive cheer for Gemma and So, Britain went mad, poor Gemma and Will, but hey, we made quite a lot of money, so... Um, uh, but it's about those moments of magic, drama and jeopardy, whatever platform we're on, however we want to make it work, um, we keep hold of that. And that's why I'm really grateful to all my Endemol colleagues around the world. And I'm grateful to you for listening. And I believe Kate, who is basically just gossiping in the corner there, I can see her to someone, um, perhaps asking where lunch is, literally can't hear me, um, is coming back on. Kate, you're on. That was seamless. We can edit that, right? And it'll look fine. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. Come sit Thank down. You. Come you. sit down. Well, that was interesting. I think it's interesting that you think that the face, the new face of the future is the Rolling Stones. Yeah. And if I'm honest, Kate, I thought it would get a slightly bigger laugh. But yeah. that's, that's well, life. That can it's happen. It's kind of a craggy face. It can face. happen. It can happen. It's kind that's of a craggy face. But a nice, mm. but you know, they've mm. made a lot of money mm. and hopefully you'll make did a lot of money too. Did I mention I'd met Mick Jagger? Yeah. Uh, you did yeah. mention that. And cool. he was thrilled to meet you mm. as you were a living mm. legend. Um, let me ask you a couple of questions. We don't have a lot of time, but I've been told we have at least five or ten minutes. Right. So, um, you know, Endemol has a history of, you know, riding the wave, getting it right. You know, Big Brother was a great reality format. Even before that, we went through the, the you know, the sort of the, the lifestyle phase with changing rooms. You know, how do you get the next hit? What is the DNA? You talked about taking more risk. I think you meant financial risk. Yeah. Is that the new... Is that the new formula? Is it about buying companies? What's? I think it's a combination of things. Um, and of course, needless to say, uh, you know, if we knew what the next big, yeah, we'd be doing it. You'd be doing um, it. Well, I suppose we are doing it, you I'd like to argue, uh, in some of those shows we've shown you. But, but the point is, I think in some ways, I could answer it by going back to basics, which is the end of our model and why I'm there and have always have been there for a long time is that it's all about the creative process, if you like, and it's about the notion of ownership. And I think that's a very, very important fundamental principle, which is to say, you know, creative people as individuals want to own, they, they're like babies, right, these ideas. Whatever platform they're on, they're like your babies. And I think you need to be somewhere, you need to create an environment where you allow people to feel ownership of those ideas. And, and, which is and why more, you don't have the central control. Which is why you don't have a central okay. control. And by the way, even if you tried it, it wouldn't work. Right. So, but right. no, but that's right. But I think more than that, that's reflected as a company, if you like, because as a company, we have a mentality mm -hmm. where we allow people, creatives, to follow their dreams. And it's slightly over maybe emotional language, but actually that is what they are. People do want to create shows and ideas that have an impact on, on, on the world. So I, th so I think it's about encouraging and nurturing yeah. those people. And then I think it's about, in some senses, judgment about what you back and what right. you support. Right. And indeed, you know, in, in some of the newer platforms, it's about, yeah, probably putting your money down. Yeah. Um, and indeed, in scripted, it's very much that, you know. Because, you, you know, you talked about um, the Fear Factor YouTube uh, ex right. experiment. And, you know, you talked about getting back into m and in a sensible way, is what you said. Yeah. Well, what do you actually mean by that? Because, I mean, what we're seeing now is you know, Time Warner's invested in Maker Studios, which is one of these multi-channel networks. You've got the Churning Group and Comcast just invested in full screen. 
Discovery Bar uh, Revision 3 a while ago. I mean, what are you talking about? What kind of M&A do you think you need? Yeah, I think, well, I think there's sort of two things there. And I think I said when I said it that it's in some senses unusual because I'm not, yeah, look, I'm not making a big announcement, but Eust and I talked about this and thought it was very important because a lot of people ask us, mm. you know, in, in a sense about, you know, are we in a position to do that? And I think it's important to say that the health of the company is such that we, that's a statement we're making, that 2013, that's where we're going to be. You and have we'll, the money. We have the money, we have the resources for the right deals, and we will be announcing um, some shortly. So oh, I'm, I'm sorry to be uh, a bit of a well, tease. Can you tell but, us sorry, can I just Can I just make one yeah. point about that? Because there's another thing you, you put in there on the, on, on the YouTube and digital video area. I think there's another quite important thing to say, which is um, it's not just sort of about m and I think where the online digital video comes into play and where we have to think differently and are thinking differently is that is actually a case where you do have to think multi-territory and start to work as a group right. more because those sort of ideas are by definition global and multi-territory in the way that TV formats aren't right. in the way they create. Yeah. So I think we're now working much more closely mm -hmm. as a group, particularly in the digital sphere. It's essential you do that. So mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. So the kind of things you'll be interested in, I assume, are multi-channel networks, things on YouTube. I thought it was interesting you said, you know, we have 100 YouTube channels, but that's not the be-all and end-all. It's about how they work together. It's about how to create some kind of a network. Yeah, I think it's in a sense how to, how to market between them and, and how to, you know, I think a, a year or so ago, we were, I can genuinely say we were looking at something like Mr. Bean, which has the most extraordinary power uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and so on, and, 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 and trying to work out sort of how we harness that. And I think in some ways the answer is much simpler than we thought, which mm. is that, well, look, with brands like that, Fear Factor and others, you know, actually what you do is you create almost like a hub that people come to, and then you can market, you know, Mr. Bean can market Fear Factor. And so you can start to talk to each other. I think it becomes about critical mass. Mm. I think that's more important. Than, and I think, you know, and I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm guilty, that, you know, even as a, six months ago, you know, life moves pretty quickly, right? You're sort of looking at YouTube and thinking, actually, yeah, it's like another broadcaster. So, hey, we've got a channel. Now, by the way, we have some very impressive channels in France, Germany, Italy, for example, that, that are sort of original content and work very well. But I think probably what we're all agreeing is that you use your big brands and then you can then use those to start, you know, then have some non-branded stuff once you've started marketing them in the right way mm -hmm. and you create that scale. Mm -hmm. Because as I say, it is, there's so much um, content being uploaded, you know, it's very hard to get hurt. Yeah, it's very hard to get hurt. Let's talk about Saturday night and primetime entertainment shows. Seems to me that that's a difficult nut to crack. I know in the UK, everyone's sort of thinking, gosh, where's the new idea? What's, you know, we're bringing back a, a take me out, for heaven's sakes, on ITV. I mean, what, how do we get the new idea? What's the problem with prime time? Sa I think Take Me Out's a good show. I think Take Me Out's a good show. It's not, well, yeah. not one of ours. Yes. But um, uh, can't but remember you know, the company. Words, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. um, Who made it? There, there are, I, I understand there are other companies out there making there shows. There are a few and other companies. You have yes. to deal with that. Yes, yes. Um, but I think, uh, look, actually, I think it's a rather, I think it's a pretty good time right now. Um, I think. But how do you revolutionize that genre? I mean, you sort of, did, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about Money Trap. You know, Money Drop was revolutionary, and it sort of said, let's get some interactivity in there. Let's get the audience involved. Uh, you know, X Factor was revolutionary. It used telephony for voting. What's the next thing? How do we look, make... How do we revolutionize product? Yeah, I think, look, I, th I tell you what's very interesting, for example, and again, sorry, forgive me for talking about one of it, but if you take something like Your Face Sounds me, actually, in some ways, that's a very traditional... Um, yeah. television program yeah. when you watch it. You see. But it's got some very nice twists in it and it's, uh, it's very well made and it's about the timing. It's about saying actually, and I'm not sure, I mean this is not why it came about, but you sort of think well actually maybe it's interesting now to keep, have something upbeat that cheers people up and isn't sort of cruel and, and so I think you never quite know and I think there's always, you know, it, it sort of partly depends, you know, what, how people are feeling at a certain time and everything comes back into fashion at some point. But I actually think um, you know, with the evidence is people are watching more television, people are enjoying television. Um, the, I think there are some great shows out there. Not, I mean, some we make and many that others don't. I don't recognize a sort of issue uh, with, with wh 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 where I think there is an interesting debate to be had um, that we're looking at. And, you know, part of the reason I looked at why we, it's interesting to look around the world for new formats is because, you know, question, there's a question. Are the traditional places that are taking risks with, with formats, the UK and the US, are they, as, are they becoming more risk averse? You know, because you do see a trend, and we've benefited from this. You know, in the UK, perhaps more imported formats right now. You know, The Voice, fantastic yep. show. Um, Your Face Sounds Familiar, uh, Splash, and so on. Now, great shows, right? Mm. So, great show. But, well, um, Splash has gotten, I mean, I know it got recommissioned, but 
Great shows. Okay. And uh, I mean, sorry. More by, diving by way, shows? No. Right. By the way, we could go down a road here, which is always interesting. When people talk about, te- this is a whole other thing, but when t- people talk about good or bad television, what they mean is, I like it or I don't like it. Right. It's as simple as that. That's true. So it sounds to me like you're maybe not the number one fan of Splash. No. Um, I, Sorry. I, 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 I like it. Okay. Um, but, 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 but I think, you know, I think there's, there's a feeling that, you know, it's hot. Broadcasters are finding life tough. Yeah. You know, uh, a, 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 and taking risks is scary. And actually, you know, I think, you know, to be a global company, NWS, puts you in a, obviously puts you in a very strong position because we're able to say, well, look, there's a format that's proven here or that works well in Spain or whatever. And so I think you're going to have to put more money in, basically. Well, it's not necessarily about that. In that context, it's not necessarily about more money. It's about being able to pick from a sort of a menu of shows that, you know, maybe don't have to start in the UK. Mm-hmm. They can start in... Right. Italy or Spain or Latin America or wherever. So I, yeah. so I, th- I think it's about bringing the best to bear. But I'm aware that's something Endemol can do. And I think it's something we're good at doing. And I think I have showed in that slide, you know, that's a very core strategy for us now. You know, Germ- in Germany, two great hit shows coming out of Germany right now for Endemol, um, uh, which, which is fantastic to see. And not something that happened two, three, four years ago, but it's ha- happening now. Yeah. Do you worry at all about the fact that Simon Cowell is doing his next big show on YouTube? Uh, worry for who? Well, as a big producer, and you, and you see him going to you know, YouTube as opposed to going to television. I mean, does that sort of say to you, gosh, no, no, the landscape th- has changed. We no, need to th- change what we're doing. No, I, well, sorry. Yes, I think we need to change what we're doing. And also he's not and working with companies like Fremantle or Endemol. I mean, I, I, I think you know, the, the model is changing. We have to do new things. That's something I'm rather excited by. Uh, and I think in the end, you know, why am I excited by that? Because it's a place where brands really come into their own, and it's a place where good, strong, creative people can find their feet and can learn, and it's a wonderful process. So I think Simon, from what I can see, is doing exactly the right thing. By the way, he's also got some very big television shows going, so it's, it's not one or the other. It's, it's a combination That's of things. True. I think we've run out of time. I don't know if I'm supposed to take questions from the audience, but uh, if I am, turn the lights up. If I'm not... I won't, but uh, I guess I'm not. So, right, sorry about that. They're all dying to ask They're questions, I can see. I'm sure you'll be around. It's been very interesting to hear from Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good luck with what you're doing going forward and with you know, the Rolling Stones, you know, you want to keep that, them on side, definitely. Could you please join me in thanking Tim Hinks? Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Can we just walk off? <laughs>